Welcome to our second module. In this module, we're gonna start with the design of our wireless transceivers and uh, particularly here, we will concentrate on the design of the QAM mapper and QAM demapper blocks, namely the symbol mapping modules, all right? Which in my opinion, by the way, are the simplest to start with. So what we're gonna build in this module is a system that uh, takes bits in the input right here and then maps those bits to QAM symbols. Okay, so here's a QAM mapper. And then the output symbols are gonna be looped back right away to the receiver where these symbols are going to be demapped, demapped back into bits. Okay. In the future, our transceivers are going to have many more blocks like pulse shaping here, then a uh, meshed filter here, and many others all the way to the channel. All right. So, but for now, we don't want to investigate those blocks yet. We want to concentrate on this part here. So, all we're gonna do is convert bits to symbols and then from symbols back to bits, okay? All right, so now we are ready to start with coding our actual transceivers, all right? So let's start with uh, some organization of the directory. Uh, we can, uh, let me create a folder here. Let's call it wireless FPGA course, okay? And inside this folder, let me create another one just for the symbol mapping box, all right? Here, what I wanna do is create a new file and let's call it the qam 4 mappertbhd all right? This file is gonna be the VHDL code for the fourth one encoder, okay? All right, so I'm going to start by pasting the libraries here. So let me paste here. Okay, and then defining the entity. Okay, so let's call it QAM4 mapper is and QAM4 mapper. Okay, so here inside entity, I have to define the ports of the block. And we know already that our block is going to receive bits so we have bits in and that's an input and since we're we're we'll use a qe a four one mapper then we have two bits in the input for each symbol so it's a standard logic vector of one down to zero all right and in the output we will have a symbol a complex symbol. So sim out real. That's the real part of the output symbol. That's an output. And we will have std logic factor one down to zero. I'm gonna explain next why one down to zero, alright? So and of course we have the sim out m for the imaginary part, that's an output to and we have another student standard logic factor one down to zero. Okay. Oh, here. All right. So let's let's start stop and think about the actual symbol out. We want to use a fixed point number for the output symbol, but we need to design this fixed point number so that we do not lose. Uh, Part of the of the symbol due to the precision of the number. Okay, so our constellation. Let's let's think about it. So we're gonna have a constellation like this. All right, and this constellation is going to have four points like this, and we're gonna use gray coding, right? So we're gonna map zero zero here, and then here. We're gonna use zero one, here one zero, and here one one. Why do we do that? 
because we want to have a single change of bit from one symbol to the other, right? So here from 00 to 01, we have just one bit changing. Here, again, just one bit changing, and so on and so forth, all right? So that's our consolation. Now, in terms of numbers, what we're gonna have is this number here is going to be a plus one, plus one, all right? So here we have plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, okay? So this here is plus one, minus one. Or if you, wanna, if, if you want to have, in terms of a complex number, that's plus one, oops, plus one minus j1, all right? Here we have uh, minus one plus j1, and here minus one minus j1. All right, so what, what we can see here is that all of the output symbols are going to be plus one or minus one. So we only need a fixed point number that can represent plus one and minus one. And for that, we need two bits, all right? So one bit is going to represent the sign and the other bit is going to be used for indicating a plus one or minus one, okay? So that's why we choose a standard logic factor of one down to zero, okay? Now, after that, we can define the architecture. So let's call architecture behavioral um, of QAM for mapper is begin oops and architecture and behavioral oh sorry okay and now let's let's take a look and and think about how we could implement that so if you look again here in the constellation what we could think about is that look whenever the the least significant bit is zero we have let's see so here here we have zero zero so the least significant bit is zero and here again and what we have in common in this is that both numbers have plus one in their real part okay hence we could for example use the variable bits in then take the least significant bit by index zero and then whenever this bit is zero we would map to plus one Whenever it is one, we would then map to minus one. See here. So when the least significant bit here is one, right, or here, then we have the real part, the real component being minus one. Okay. And then whenever bits in one, similarly, whenever it is zero, so let's take a look here. Both of these are zero in the most significant bit and what they have in common is that the imaginary component is plus one okay so here is imaginary is plus one and when the bit is one the imaginary is minus one so we could just use this for creating a a efficient mapping rule in bhdl but there's another way to implement that and that's that's the way we are actually going to use because this way which I'm gonna show right now is a little bit more a little bit easier to scale when when we actually change the consolation the way we're gonna do in fact is by creating arrays for both the imaginary and the real components of the points in the consolation so to do that we first define a type so here is how we define a type in DHDL. We, we, we say type and then the name of the type and we're gonna call constellation, all right? And we say that this is an array of zero to three because we, we our constellation has four points, right? So zero to three. And our array is going to be composed by signed numbers. So each point in our constellation, plus one or minus one, is going to be represented by a signed fixed point two bit number. Okay. 
So type constellation is array 0 to 3 of signed 1 of signed 1 down to 0. All right. And better than using the 3 here, I think it's better to define a constant for the constellation size. And that constant is going to be an integer and its value is 4. Okay. Constellation size and type for the constellation. Now, what we need then is a we need two arrays, one for the real part and one for the imaginary part. For the real part, so real part of the constellation. Again. So we have QAM for cons real. And what's the type of this cons? The type is exactly the type that we just created, constellation type, all right? And then we define, okay? And we do the same thing for the imaginary part, all right? Here. Now we need to fill the numbers. And recall that our constellation was based on the following mapping rule. So whenever our bits in is zero, zero, then our output, so output symbol, our output symbol was plus one, plus one, all right? And when the input was zero, one, then our output was actually minus one plus one. And when it was one zero, then we had plus one, minus one. And then, well, finally, for one one in the input, the output symbol would be minus one, minus j one. All right. So that's basically what we need here. This first column here in the output symbol is going to be the real component. So let's, let me try to align here. Real, and that is the imaginary component. So here we need plus one, then minus one, plus one, minus one. But not one thing, our array is composed by silent numbers, and whenever we put something like one minus one in VHDL, that's an integer. So we need to convert this number to an integer. And to do that, we call our type conversion table. So here, we have an integer number, integer here, and we wanna have actually a signed number. So we need to follow this path here. And to do this conversion, when we need to use the two signed function. And this function requires you to pass two arguments. One of them is the energy itself, and the other is the length of the target signed number. All right. So here we use two signed, and our target number is going to have our time si target signed number is going to have two bits. So the same thing for all of the other symbols all right here two okay now for the imaginary part of the constellation that that's basically the same thing let me copy here okay and we just need to use the second column here so it's one one minus one minus one all right so we essentially created two arrays and now all we need to do is use the bits that can come in the input of the mapper block to index those arrays, okay? So that means that our output symbol, for example, symbol out Rio, is going to take the value taken from these this array, all right, and we need to pass now the index here. But no one thing, 
Whenever we want to index an array in VHDL, then we need to use an integer number, okay? And our input, bits in, is a standard logic vector, so it's not an integer. We need to convert that. And the way we're going to do is first create here a signal, and let's call it bits in unsigned. Unsigned. It's of type unsigned and one now to zero. Okay. Why do we need this symbol? This signal, sorry. So what we want to do with this signal is uh, get closer to what is an integer. Okay. So let's go for, uh, let's go take a look in our type conversion diagram again. Here. So now the way the path that we need to take is from a standard logic factor all the way to an integer. So there's only two possible ways to do that. We go from standard logic vector to signed then to integer, or we go to unsigned then to integer. Okay, and that's the way we're gonna do. So we take this green arrow here from standard logic vector to unsigned, and then the yellow the yellow arrow from unsigned to integer. Okay. So we need to use those two functions, the unsigned function and the two integer function. All right. Okay, so then let's use effectively these unsigned uh, signal and pass to the signal the input. Okay. So we convert the input to an unsigned signal. All right. And then we use this unsigned signal to index our constellation and to do that we first convert it to integer so we use two integer of the unsigned number right is that all we need no not yet why because our output symbol is again a standard logic vector and our constellation note is a signed it is composed by signed elements so in the end, we still need one more conversion here, standard logic factor, and that's it. We, that's, that's, that's what we need. So for the imaginary part, we do essentially the same thing. So here, and there you go. So let me comment that. So map the input bits to symbols, to QAM1 symbols, okay? and use the input bits to index the constellation arrays. All right, I think that's it. So now we are ready to actually simulate that. All right, so now we're gonna copy this code in a Vivado project so that we can actually check the syntax, okay? Uh, before pr proceeding, I've actually noticed a couple of mistakes here, and let me correct those. And for example, here we should have defined the imaginary constellation, so that should be a different thing right here. And in addition to that, here to separate the elements of this array of signed elements, we should use comma instead of semicolon. All right, so. Let me substitute here, okay. And in addition to that, I had defined this constant and just to make it a little bit more organized and I should have used it here actually. So our array is from zero to three. And now we are using the constellation size as a constant, all right, cool. So now let's switch to Vivado 